let's talk about special values. So basically what we're talking about are really what do you do with your nulls? And there's a lot of different options and places to deal with your nulls. So for instance, um, let's, uh, let's build a map really quick. So I'm gonna bring country onto detail. And I happen to know with this data set that the Philippines have reorganized uh, all of their uh, states. So if I bring state onto the detail as well, I'm gonna get some nulls. So there is my little null indicator down there telling me I've got 22 locations the tablet doesn't know what to do with. So if I click on this, I get three options. That's how I can deal with the nulls in, from a map. And generally, if it's not a map, like say it's a line graph or something and I have nulls on there, you won't get this top option, you'll get these bottom two. By the way, in case you're wondering, the way I am drawing on my screen, and I can obviously you know, zoom in and things like that, that is, a, that is a tool called Zoom It. So it's super useful. I always get asked, hey, how did you do that stuff on your screen? Download it, it's free. Anyway, back to our lesson here. So I can filter the data, meaning I just pretend they don't exist, literally shoving it under the rug. I can show the data at the default position, which means I treat it as a zero. And in the case of a map, that's zero degrees longitude, zero degrees latitude. Or specific to a map, I can go click edit locations and try to figure out if it's a misspelling or put in my own latitude and longitude to hard code that position. Um, like I said, if for other non-geographic maps, you'd get those two options. There's a third, I guess in this case, a fourth option that I have is this as well, which is just right clicking on this and hiding the indicator. Again, that's just accepting that I've got nulls and not doing anything about it. And if I do that, I might decide later, you know what, I actually do want to do something different. So how do I get that indicator back? Well, you can do that from your analysis drop-down menu where it says special values. And you can see it's saying hide. So what I'm going to do here is show it. So I brought it back. So now I have those options available to me again. Um, I will say, uh, why don't we, actually, I think I can do it from this chart right here. I'll bring sales in up here. And I'll just point out the fact that, um, I think I may have missed that. There we go. Um, we'll do that as a sum. And again, every single one of these has this option on how you deal with special values. And if you only want to work with the special values, that's what this fourth, fourth option is over here. Include the null values, uh, non-null values, or just let everything come through. So if you're trying to validate your data or, or test to see if there's nulls, you might play with some of those options. But even beyond all of that, there are, exam there are uh, examples or use cases with your data where you'll need something more than what we've just looked at. So I'm gonna show you an example of a spark line. Uh, and you can see we've got missing values for large pieces of this. In fact, Hong Kong only has two data points. So we have to figure out if we're trying to show a spark line, which is ideally trying to show us a trend of performance over time, we are losing out on some of the value of this chart with incomplete data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to format and I'm just gonna pick anything because really what I wanna do is just get my formatting menu open over here on the left. And this drop down here allows me to pick which of my fields I wanna go format. Well, the, the field that has the nulls is sales. So this is the one I wanna go choose to format. Let's click on that, let's go to format. Now I don't want the axis, the axis is fine. What I want is the pane, or in other words, my marks inside of the pane. And at the bottom, I've got this special values. In other words, what do you wanna do with your nulls? Now right now, it is just set at show it indicator. So if you have no data, don't show anything. But I have other options here. So if I start down here, um, hide the break lines, that's basically the same thing as show it indicator in this example. I can also say, you know what, connect the lines. And so it did exactly that. It said, say for instance, Hong Kong has two data, two data points, so we're just gonna draw a line right in between them. That does give me a line, but that does not give me an accurate trend. For a spark line chart, that wouldn't make sense because I am overstating Hong Kong's performance as a result of me just drawing a straight line between those two data points. So for this particular example, that option isn't very viable. In others, it might be. The other option that I've got is this show at default value, which is, in other words, let's treat them as a zero. And for this particular chart, it's working great. Which is exactly what I wanted. Afghanistan has some null results there, so we're mapping those so we can see the ups and downs of our business accurately. And of course, you can do that again. 
go find the appropriate field for the uh, probably the measure that you're trying to deal with. And then it's down here under pane called special values. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone.